but obviously, <clears throat> obviously that was not enough time. So, um, well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Well, thanks. Uh, only a half hour can, late. Uh, well, we can go an extra half hour. It's not a big deal. Um, so nobody really knows what time it is. This is the 16th of November, 2014, and it's right at the top of the hour, 6 o'clock. Perfect timing, and here we are. There it is in the recording. And we've got Mike Martzio with us from southern France, and he's going to tell us about, uh, this is a learning together session, uh, one of our regular Sunday sessions. And um, he's going to tell us about real English, and he's made it here. So meanwhile, we've been playing a little bit with Chatwing. So welcome, Mike. Okay. Good to see well, you. Thanks. Um, can we put up my uh, PPT? There we go. Yeah. <coughs> um, and um, oh, you need to be moderator. Let me let me fix that for you. Oops. Switching around the screen. There we go. Making you moderator. Okay. Which means that I can also move the uh, PPT um, yes. from page to page. Yeah, you want to make sure that works for you? Yeah, it does. Very good. Okay. okay. Yes, it's moving. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Here we are on the first uh, first page of my presentation. Um, I wanted to point out that um, these days, we not only speak about using uh, real English in the classroom, but also in online lessons, because online uh, learning is uh, is really coming along very fast, in, uh, according to everything that I've seen. Um, as I point out here, uh, every lesson in real English is based on a, a question or a couple of questions. And this particular uh, lesson, my most recent one, is based on two questions we asked on the sidewalk, as usual, in South Beach, uh, Miami Beach. Uh, we asked people, um, have you ever lived in another country or spent a month or more in another country? And since we were in a super cosmopolitan, on a super cosmopolitan uh, sidewalk, um, we asked this question to both Americans and to um, people from uh, several different countries. Um, so it was quite a mixture. Um, in some cases, we were speaking to Americans who had lived, for example, in Germany, uh, or we were speaking to uh, people from India who had spent time, uh, who had lived in Great Britain and, and in the States. Um, so we were making uh, uh, a lot of comparisons and contrasts with people of different nationalities. And the second part of the question that we asked was, is there anything that you prefer or dislike about the U.S. compared to whatever country they are uh, originally from. Um, OK, I'm going to go on to my next slide here. Um, yeah, just historically, uh, well, first of all, a little note on blended learning. What is blended learning in my case? Well, the videos uh, are used uh, by teachers with the students according to the teacher's own, own lesson plans uh, in many cases, in addition to the interactive quizzes, uh, which can be taken whenever convenient for the students. So um, the blended part, I think, is pretty obvious. And then I have an historical note here, just pointing out that um, Real English first appeared uh, 20 years ago, uh, tiny tiny uh, videos online, 160 by 120, which is all that was possible with dial-up connections. And my friends all told me that I was nuts to be trying to do video on the internet, because there was so much waiting time uh, to begin watching the video. Now, 20 years later, 
the web is saturated with video and typos. Uh, and um, we have uh, exercises that are extremely rich compared to what we used to have. And um, uh, one of the new features that I really like about the latest videos is that there are video tutorials for every um, for every exercise, so that I finally found a way to get beyond the problem of providing instructions for people who come from 150 different lang 150 different countries, representing just as many uh, different uh, languages. Um, these new tutorial videos simply show how the exercises work. They're usually not necessary, but in case anyone needs help, they always have help now with these new uh, tutorials. Um, we're going to go right now to, um, oh, wait a minute. Can, can I share the uh, screen here, Vance? Um, or should I send people to go places? Well, you could try a screen share. Uh, that might work. Okay. Do you, do you see the tool in the at the top, the one that's the overlapping squares? I see. I just pasted a, a URL in there, or uh, not a URL or screen share. You asked for screen share. Screen share means you share a window. Yeah. Uh, you can share an application like a browser, oh. for example. And you can also do a web tour. Oh yeah, I wanted to. Uh, web tour is the the little globe on the square. So you, can, oh. you can try sharing your browser oh. window. You could keep it in your browser and open it that way. That way we can see where you scroll. OK, you're going okay. for a web tour, so um. you can put the, uh, the URL in the blank there. OK. Is it the lesson 81? Yeah, the same. All right. As you want me to face it there for let's, you? Let's let's see. Look. I'll put it there. Well, it is there, I think. No. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> For some reason, my browser has buried my. Oh, I know it's there. Yeah. Okay. The page That's doesn't look out. very good, but um, at least. Uh, um, hmm. And there's no sound, of course, from the video. Right. OK. Um, well, this is a typical main lesson page in, every, in any case. I suppose everybody can see lesson 81. Is that correct? Yes. Um, OK. Um, uh, these exist, these uh, what I call main lesson pages. They exist, exist for every lesson. Um, this is um, the starting point. Um, after having gone to, uh, well, I'm not going to paste the URL of the other page, but after having gone to the uh, summary of all the lessons, uh, we clicked on lesson 81 and we arrived here. And what do we have? We have um, the lesson contents. In this particular case, it's it's really a, a long lesson, and um, I. I give all the details of everything, everything of importance in the lesson. And if you were to go to the left and and scroll down, you you will see that there are eight uh, interviews within this lesson. And under each interview, I I show the verb tenses, the vocabulary, and uh, idioms, et cetera, used by each interviewee. In the middle, it looks very messy here. It looks neat on the original page, but here it looks necess it looks it looks messy. I made a geographic summary of the comparisons made by the eight interviewees. For example, at the top we see Pete. He's from the USA, and he lived in Germany. And the next one is Jeanette. She's British from England, and she now lives in the USA, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we also have uh, general information for the teachers on the right side. 
this is the this is the same for all the lessons that exist. Um, okay, I'm going to get back to my uh, PPT, which I can do by clicking. Ah, very good. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, and I'm going to share the. Let's see what it looks like if I try to share the screen with uh, the. Um, I'd like to show you an interesting fellow here. Um, but on the other hand, since you cannot you cannot um, hear the audio, I want I'm going to just going to give you the um, I'm going to give you the uh, um, excuse me. Um, where where can I? Can you? Are these clickable? Um, these links here. Um, if not, how can I give you the? You uh, might give link? us the YouTube link. Can we? Can you give uh, us the YouTube link, or can I get it for you? I can. I can get it and paste it. You talking okay, about the sure. South Beach Two? You want the um, YouTube link for that? I, I, um, what I want is um, the where, where it says here um, uh, eighty one dash seventy two ASP, where it says exercises with very short clips number one um, here. Um, okay. Exercises in very short clips, number one. Yeah, that's what we want to watch. Short clips. It doesn't have that in the. It, it says exactly short clips. Uh, on the, on the, if we look at the page that's on the screen right now, it's the second. Oh. It's called number I've one. Got a slide on the screen. Yeah, on the screen we have a slide. It says at the top, extract of lesson eighty-one, Utkarsh, right? Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, no, we're we're, uh, we're not we're not going with you. Yes, I got it now. Okay, extract. Yeah, for some reason we're not following your slideshow. So uh, I've been changing slides, but I didn't notice you're on slide five now. But there's a follow button. Next to your oh, I wonder if people are following me. Have I got it now? Have I got? What does everybody see? Does everybody see extract of lesson 81? Can everyone see that on their screen? And if so, there's a. Uh, we've got to get. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can handle the uh, the screen share for you. I'll see if I can. Get it here. Why don't you go ahead and talk about what we're going to see, and I'll see if I can get it up for you. Okay. Uh, we're going to watch a, a video that's exactly 49 seconds long of a fellow uh, who was born in India and who has lived, was, who grew up in the UK, and who has also lived in the USA. He speaks uh, relatively fast. And um, he's perfect in, in many ways for real English. Uh, this, uh, partially My problem is I'm, I'm, I'm having to copy out the, the video link, so don't worry, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm coming. I've got to keep the link on the screen in order to do that. Um, yeah. I was wondering. If we can't just send the people to that page, and it's just that since it's in it's embedded in the uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, which is yeah, I, underst I understand. I'm, um, I'm I'm transcribing it, so go ahead and talk, and I'll I'll have it there. It's Unit 81. ASP, right? Is that the Unit 81 72? Uh, ah, okay. Yes, got it. A one dash seventy two eight ESP. Okay. 
81. Is, is there's no way that I can I can copy the text and send it to you? If you can, if you have the text there. Oh yeah, I have it right here. It now. We've got it on our screen. We've got it in a, embedded in a slideshow, and that's not clickable. But I've got it here, so I'll, I'll put it on a web tour now. Okay, is that it? Um, um, yeah, except um, what we want is to is to watch the video. Okay, let me get that for you. It's on actually, that page, right? Actually, we, you know, uh, Vance, we have no choice. We have to simply send the students there, and they have to. And if they don't experience this, uh, it's not going to make any sense. Okay, I'm going to. I'm getting the link, the YouTube link. That's easy to get. I've got it here. So, let me uh, post that into the chat if I can find it. Where to post? Here we go. Okay, this here's the video link. I'll, I'll send everyone directly to that video. There we go. That's the video link, and here is it is in the text chat. Yeah, everyone, please watch this, and then we'll come back. It's less than a minute. Okay. I don't know if other people heard that. I, I, I heard it uh, through my Illuminate, I think. Did other people experience the same thing? Um, yeah. Um, hmm. I'd like to, um, I'm just going to paste the Real English page here and ask everyone to uh, be a student now and try to do the exercise as if you are a student. I just put the link in the chat box here. Um, just go to the real English. Okay. That's on the screen share. Um, forget the forget the screen for a moment and just uh, be a student for a second and, and go to this this link. Here it is again. Um, and do the exercise as if you were a student. And if you have problems, just like a student, uh, click on the help button and to see what happens. Um, there's no way to get around this. If you, if you don't experience it, then there's, there's no point in me talking because it won't make sense. We're here to experience. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, so everyone, please go there and do the exercise, and then we can talk about it. I'm on the page 81-72 ASP, and I'm trying to find the exercise. I see A, interviewer, B, uh, interviewer, is there anything you prefer? All right. Um, restart. If you have a problem, click on help. Oh, I see. You're supposed to play the video, and then you listen and click what you heard? Yeah. Uh, in, in the correct order. Oh, I see. Okay. 
Uh, oh, I got it. Yes. So each each one selects the uh, selects something in the dialogue. For example, I believe it was hi. Uh, what's your name? Interviewer. Right. Uh, uh, you talk. Uh -huh, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. He says yes. Uh, so you're getting the next line of the dialogues. Okay. Right. Where are you from? Okay. He says, well, I'm originally from India. Uh, she says, wow, wow, I think. Let's see. What do you think about the United States? I believe that must be it. I'm just reading what I think the correct answers are. Uh -huh. How am I doing so far? <laughs> um, um, people are just <laughs> warm and welcoming. I love it. I lived here for four years. Okay. Um, People are just warm and welcoming. Okay. Nope. Nope. Oh, I got a no. So yeah. All right. So I get some feedback. Um. Hey, you can click click on um, um the video, of course, eight. and yes. stop at it. Yes. You can hear the video. Uh -huh. and Go back and answer the question. Well, I've completed mine. Okay, I got 86 percent. That's because right. I was, you were distracting me. Right. <laughs> I just want I I just wanted to point out um, that um, this for this particular lesson, I chose that type of exercise for each interviewee because um, it's. Um, it's the most general type of listening comprehension that you can imagine. And then beginning with the very next exercise, we get into detail about everything that we just listened to. Um, we get into uh, the vocabulary. If you could, uh, let's see, where, where is everybody at? Can we simply, since you're on the Real English site, can you, um, can you just uh, click forward to the next exercise, everybody? Yes. So this will be forward to seventy-three. Right. Mhm. Mm okay. As you can see, so I'm watch sorry. The exercise. I'm responsible for the telephone noise. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Um, as you can see, um, uh, the ver this this exercise um, is not an exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. We give the answers away. Um, so if we just click again and go to exercise seventy four. Um, yeah, so that's just uh, putting pictures, associating pictures with some of the things that he said, uh, making the people sort of uh, widen their understanding through graphics, giving some graphic feedback. Right. And now drag the sentences to the pictures. Okay. All right. Drag the sentences to the pictures. Okay. And, w yes. and what happens um, if if you're wrong? If I'm wrong, okay. Let's see. I'm gonna. Oh, it bounces back. Oh, you worked in New York. Oh, yeah. You probably can. All right. I got all but one right, and it's not going. Work in New York. I can't seem to find. If, or unless there's more on the screen. Um, if um, if you get something wrong. Uh, it should appear red. It suddenly becomes red. Oh, okay. Mine kind of um, back, but I'm. In, in other words, uh, yeah, it does two things at the same. It, it does two things. It uh, becomes red and then bounces back. Mm -hmm. At least okay. that's what it should be doing on your screen. So, in other words, uh, I made the exercise easy. Now, if we go forward again, exercise 75, you see the same thing again, except this time it's based upon listening comprehension.
In other words, um, you were listening to the is, recording, right? In other words, it's very um, um, progressive. And, and the very first exercise of this type, we were simply given the correct answers. In the second one, we were shown that our answers were wrong. Uh, and this time, we simply have to get them right. So it's like uh, uh, <coughs> going from practice mode to test mode, so to speak. All right, let's go to exercise 76. And um, in fact, in this particular case, exercise, <laughs> exercise 75 was also impossible to uh, get a wrong uh, answer because it became red uh, if, you were, uh, if you made a mistake. And now, finally, with exercise uh, 76, uh, you have um, test mode for the listening comprehension. And before, for example, the, the word India was written over the country, and now there's nothing written over the pictures. So it's all based upon listening comprehension uh, and the pictures as helpers. Let's go to exercise 77. Here's another. Um, Another um, different type of uh, technique that we use that I use quite a bit. Um, it's a question of choosing the correct uh, form of the verb. Um, which you could do if you if you like. I'm going to um, go back to my I'm going to go to page six of my um, of my PowerPoint yes. presentation uh, now. Okay. Um, in other words, um, if you were to go through those exercises, you would you would see that um, we're teaching vocabulary, we're teaching verb structures, synonyms, and antonyms, and um, all within um, the context of someone who's speaking at normal speed, which seems very fast to uh, most students. Um, okay, I'm bringing I, I, up your PowerPoint slide so I can copy URLs from that if you need something. I didn't yeah. have it on my screen before. Yeah. Um, just a second. So I can copy structures, synonyms, synonyms or antonyms. Yeah. And then yeah. I can put it there. Yeah, let's go for eighty one dash seventy nine. Okay, I'll get it. I'm also going to give everyone who is still here, I'm going to give them the link so they could go I'm doing that. Go here. There it is, I got it there. Mm -hmm. This is lesson eighty one. Yeah. Um, and exercise eighty one dash seventy nine, which um, um is a technique I, I like quite a bit. Um, we um, 
click on mistakes. Um, and it's a great way to do uh, intensive listening comprehension because uh, what the students read is correct, but it's not what they hear in the video clip. Uh, for example, if everyone goes to 8179 and simply once again does the um, exercise as if they were a student, um, and then maybe we come back and get some feedback from everybody because I've been speaking an awful long time without getting any kind of feedback at all. So uh, once again, uh, please uh, make believe you're a student once again, and um, and do this exercise right right here. Yes, I can see that you click on you're you're making synonyms because you click on the things that weren't really said in the video, and um, and it changes to from you have to spot the difference although the the meaning is still there the meaning is the same right yeah yep that's it. Um, it would, it's really hard to um, a sc a screen sharing is um, impossible um, on the one hand uh, in order to do it correctly um, in order for the, for the people here to experience it and on the other hand um, there's no order uh, there's no <laughs> organization of this um, Without, um, I'm, I'm clicking on the uh, on what's in the screen share, and it's working. Oh, so I don't know. Do you see what I see, or is it just happening for me? Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, oh, it is working. Yeah. Oh, wow! Well, that's great. Yeah. Okay, we can. Here we are. Awesome. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, hi, what's your name? My name is Yudkarsh. Is the correct, um, is what he said. And then the interviewer says, Yudkarsh, okay. And Yudkarsh says, yes. And, uh, where are you from? Okay, that's, that's fine as it is. And Yudkarsh says, well, I am originally from India. Grew up in the UK, but instead of although, live in Singapore now. And the interviewer says, "Awesome." No, she says, "Wow," which, holy cow, is another synonym of wow. And does she say? Does she ask, "What's your opinion about the United States?" No. What do you think about the United States? I really like it a lot, which is very similar to I love it. As we as we go through this, I'm clicking on the on everything that is not correct. Um, I lived in the United States for four years, right? I studied here. I worked in New York. That's all correct. So although I live which is not what he says. He says, despite the fact that I live so far away, I love coming back here. There is a feeling in the air in the U.S. that's extremely cool. And he doesn't say extremely cool. He says fantastic. Um, so it's a, another different way to, to teach uh, synonyms. And it forces the students to do some really intensive listening. 
um, all of all of the exercises that I make are basically uh, attempts to make the students listen intensively because there's nothing more important in, than that in learning a language. It's time for questions or something. Uh, I've done more in speaking than I should have. I have lots of questions. Uh, first of all, the really remarkable thing about your work, it's kind of like Van Gogh. You know, if you see one of Van Gogh painting, OK, that's a nice painting. And you see the thousand and first, then, wow, you know, what, what was this guy doing all his life? So uh, the scope of the scale of your work, I should say, is, is really remarkable. And the fact that you've been doing it for a long time. And, um, and you, I don't know how much people know about you here or in the recording, but you might tell us a little about yourself. You're living in southern France. You own a language school. Uh, you mentioned oh, yeah. you were kind of retired from that, but you're, you're doing real English as a passion, I suppose. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I, um, if Elizabeth is still here, she could tell you about the history of real English. I'm talking about Elizabeth Hanson Smith, who I saw here. Maybe she's not here anymore. Um, uh, way back in the 90s, uh, even before Real English came um, on, online, um, it, it first existed as um, the first versions uh, existed as VHS tapes that students, Elizabeth says she's here, good. Um, the first versions were VHS tapes that students uh, and that teachers used in the classroom. and. Um, and apparently Elizabeth still has them. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, that was the, the very first thing I did. That was I don't know early '90s uh, at some part at some point, and um, um, and then like David says, and then yes, and then. Uh, and then uh, I see you're from Tenafly, my. <laughs> aunts and uncles who lived in Tenafly, excuse me, just, uh, so, uh, um, in any case, um, the uh, VHS tapes were the first um, um, way in which um, a real English appeared. And Elizabeth um, was the first person to um, give me a heads up and uh, she um, gave me a great review which uh, uh, enabled me uh, to uh, continue. I, I was at a point where I needed some kind of uh, encouragement to continue my work, and Elizabeth gave it to me. So I've always, um, she's always uh, had a special place in my, uh, in my history, uh, um, giving me necessary, the necessary, um, uh, encouragement to keep on keep on working at it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, your your project has been such a wonderful thing, and I I love that you got it all online, and it's now accessible to millions and millions of people. And I hope there are millions using it. I was earlier suggesting that what you need to do now is put this all into a MOOC so you could offer a course on Coursera uh, showing people where these exercises are and you'd, you know, you'd get 20, 30,000 people looking at these and uh, really spread the word. And what yeah. I tried to do in the review was point out how important it is for learners of English to hear and understand people from all different backgrounds who are speaking English, um, not as a native, but as a non-native speaker, and yet using it so fluently, as indeed uh, Utkarsh is doing in this video. Uh, knowing English means being able to understand everybody, not just your teacher in the classroom. So this is a, you know, a really important program, and I, I think it should get the widest possible audience. The, um, 
the uh, underlying philosophy of it, I think, is absolutely true and correct. Well, thank you for repeating that. Um, I, uh, Can I appreciate ask a, a related uh, question? Please. This is Robert. Hi, Robert. Um, yeah, it just so happens that I have a, uh, a colleague in uh, the TESOL online uh, uh, certificate program who actually teaches uh, uh, or is developing a, a course for people who want to get into medical professions or nursing. And she's specifically looking for uh, video or audio of people with different accents. And uh, I told her about real English, but actually when I was, when I made a cursory look myself, it sounded, I guess the speakers are all so high level that they sounded almost like native speakers. And so I'm wondering if there are uh, somewhere uh, speakers that are maybe more characteristically uh, second language which English uh, speakers, uh, or if there's any way to access, the, there's probably no index, I imagine, that would tell people uh, where to find uh, speakers from a, a certain country or, or uh, region or something. No, there's no index. There's only um, the main lesson pages uh, that gives you summaries uh, of that type of information. But no, there's no easy way to get that information. Uh, well, no work those, of that sort is ever done. Those pages, like you said, that would be helpful just to look and see, uh, like on the one we saw, it identifies uh, where the speaker is from and, and uh, where he or she lives now, if that's relevant. Yeah. That's not done in a systematic way, unfortunately, but it's often done. It's, uh, there are so many things to think about, and uh, when you're working basically alone, um, you're bound to uh, leave out uh, important uh, features. Well, there's a, there's a uh, possible uh, non-paying job for somebody, I imagine. <laughs> Yeah, to well, uh, look at a bunch of these videos and then uh, catalog and make an index. Yeah, in fact, I have I have a hundred jobs of that sort. They're uh, <laughs> mostly voluntary jobs, but there are sure. also some that are important enough for me to uh, pay uh, for, um, but not a heck of a lot for each job, unfortunately. I have a question that, about your methods. Uh, just taking mute cars as an example, uh, my impression is that you video off the street. Is that correct? Always go out and meet people. Right. Okay, but here we have Ute Karsh. He's also posing in other photos. Uh, so you must work with him a little bit after his material goes online. Did you meet him on uh, the street, by the way? He's a chance encounter? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely everyone. Um, uh, we wore them up to some of the people and uh, sometimes even have lunch with them after an interview. But we always spend time with them uh, at least to get them to sign the uh, release form for the interview. Uh, but uh, no, it's totally, uh, it's totally unrehearsed and uh, there's, no, um, there's no rules. Um, uh, about anything. Um, uh, it's just w w in, the, in, the, in the very beginning we would we would interview anyone who would accept an interview, anyone we met. Uh, nowadays when we go out um, we're much more picky. Uh, we don't we don't we don't choose people who look sad or uh, we only we only uh, approach people who are either laughing or have a smile on their face, um, and um, 
because uh, we know we know it's going to work basically after all these years of filming people on the streets. And uh, one of the most important things is just to have someone who's uh, uh, feeling good and uh, who has time to uh, spend talking to us. There are a lot of criteria uh, like that. Uh, sometimes we meet really happy looking people who then make so many grammar mistakes that you can't even use them. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Um, but in the in our early days, we could only use about one person out of 20 that we got on, on tape. But nowadays, about 50% of the people are usable because we've just learned you know, how to choose people. Um, um, that's all. How many videos do you have? How, how many lessons have you created? Um, well, there are uh, 81. Um, there are now 81 um, main videos, um, and um, uh, actually, it's, it's a, there's more than that. There's quite a bit more than that. Of uh, course, there are some. Um, there, are, there are many that don't yet have uh, lessons. Um, so um, there's about Let's say um, eighty, about eighty extras, uh, eighty lessons, and about uh, about three hundred uh, videos. Um, do you use these lessons in your language school as oh, part yeah. of the curriculum? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, w without um, without twisting any arms, I like to emphasize um, uh, some of the teachers use them systematically. And others use them just to, uh, now and then. All of our teachers at the school are uh, free agents, and they use uh, what they like to use. At one time, I'm aware that um, you had a you had to separate real English from some other things that you were doing with a publisher. Uh, which I thought was really impressive at the time because you uh, you were communicating with the webheads community and you were assuring your friends in the community that these would be free. You would keep them free. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? First of all, am I am I in the right? If that's a um, good question, you can try to address it. Um, I don't I don't know what the exact reference is, uh, fans. Uh, were you were you publishing materials somewhere else, but you kept these aside to uh, you know? I, I thought there was some juncture that you were communicating with Webheads about where um, you you wanted to make sure and reassure us that these would be that these would remain free for everybody to use. Right. Um. Um, hmm. It's yeah. not a good question. <laughs> if you don't remember, it's, it's, uh, it's. But anyway, that's that's really that's one of the impressive things is that you've been doing all this work. Uh, you know, for I'm, I'm sure you get returns. Uh, you know, in as we all do. I mean, learning together, for example, we don't get paid for it, but we get returns in so many ways uh, through learning and you know other aspects of our jobs. Yeah. Um, and as you have certainly noticed, I also have uh, Google AdSense uh, advertisements uh, sprinkled uh, uh, a bit every place. So uh, I do, I do make, uh, um, I do get a check every month from Google, um, which uh, enables me. Um, you know, my my wife used to make fun of me. Uh, because I was uh, working for free, uh, so to speak. As far as she was concerned, I was uh, just uh, having fun and and uh, and teaching uh, for free. Uh, she used to laugh at that and find it very funny. Well, now when she sees the Google check, she doesn't laugh so loud. <laughs> so the oh, the, advertis the, the advertisements are. Are uh, are kind of nice, and they're 
I think that they're not obtrusive and they don't get away, get, don't get in the way of uh, learning. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, uh, I'm uh, actually doing something worthwhile uh, from her point of view also. Yeah, I know the feeling. Uh, we're getting into dinner time here, and my wife is very patient with me at these times of evening. Oh, I haven't looked <laughs> at the, uh, I haven't looked at oh, the uh, watch. Uh, I don't know. We, we have some time. In fact, I'd like to encourage, well, it's up to you, really, if you, if you have time. Uh, I'd like to encourage other people to ask questions. Uh, we had um, someone from El Salvador here earlier who had just heard about learning as a, a real English, and uh, I thought he, he seems to have left, but um, maybe somebody else, does, do other people here use real English? Would you like to ask, um, any, or do you have any feedback on its use? Any ideas for how you might use it? I have, I have some thoughts. With, with, uh, yes, go on. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say that um, um, I find that there are, there are two kinds of um, teachers uh, who, there are two ways that teachers use it. There are some teachers who uh, make their own lesson plans and don't bother with my exercises, except they might give, it, give the exercises out as homework to their students. Um, and I would really be interested in, in, in um, I, I mean, I hope that those teachers would share their lesson plans uh, so that there is a more of a community aspect of, of real English. Um, and um, so there are, those, there are two kinds of teachers who use it. Those who simply go directly to my exercises and uh, use those exercises as their lesson plan, and the other types of teachers who make their own lesson plans just for the videos. Anyway, um, Elizabeth is uh, saying, um, yeah, Coursera course, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, as an as aside to Elizabeth, uh, we have to get back in touch and get some details about that. Anyway, uh, I was just pointing out um, the blended learning aspect of that. And whoever wants to speak now and make a comment, uh, please uh, ask for the floor. Hi, Mike. This is Nina. Hi, Nina. I've, I've been in and out this session. I went down and had breakfast and came back. So I, I kind of missed the, the big new lesson that you're doing. But I just wanted to say that I'm a big fan of real English. Uh, I don't use it all the time because I'm often, I'm, I usually teach reading, writing, grammar, not listening, speaking. And so it kind of has a limited applicability to my context. But I, I recommend it all the time. And one of the mo most recent places I recommended it to was to a, a conference of teachers and training and in-service teachers at the Universidad de Oriente in El Salvador. And the person that was here earlier, Francisco Andrade, um, was the person who invited me to give that talk about um, uh, sites for listening practice. And yours was the first one on my list that I recommended. And I sent, I sent Francisco the information about this session today. And he was very excited about it. Uh, and I'm sure that he will share the recording with uh, the other people that were at the conference. And I hope you get lots more users through that. Right. I also uh, re recommend Real English to students all the time. And uh, I, I really love it. My, my, only, my only complaint about Real English is uh, that it's it's a kind of confusing interface because of the ads. And it's very easy to get thrown off the site by clicking on something that looks like it's going to lead to another part of the 
of real English, but in fact it kicks you out and takes you someplace else because it's an ad. So yeah. that's I, I mean I, I get it. I understand you you've gotta do what you've gotta do, but it's the only thing I don't like. Uh huh. Great site. Right. Right. Well, thank you for that. Um very much, Nina. Um your opinion is very important to me. Um but um, I'm afraid it's going to stay confusing <laughs> with, with adverts. In fact, um, I hate to say that I, I say I hate to say this, but that confusing aspect is is uh, is how half of the money is generated. Uh, it's uh, it's a horrible thing, but um, that's the way it works. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's horrible at all. I think it's great that you monetize something that's so valuable to yourself and to other people. And, yeah. In an unobtrusive way, as you said. I mean, you know, people people can get used to that. And in fact, actually, those distracting clicks are what's financing his site. So, Nina, you need to keep your students clicking off site. So, <laughs> I mean, that's a good joke, but, you know, still, that's, that's actually what does it, isn't it? The students who come back um, regularly, um, they they figure it out after a few sessions, and despite the fact that a lot of the ads have have arrow buttons that look as if they're part of the Real English interface, they quickly learn how to avoid clicking on the wrong arrow. Um, it's just a question of habit. I have I have a question. I think Dave Wexler had a question. I don't know. Maybe we should give Dave an opportunity to take his turn. Thanks, Ann. Um, Mike, I just randomly meeting with folks at Teachers College. There's um, she's been in the states for a little over two months. She's from China, and she's studying bilingual English or bilingual educational practices. I mean, elementary school kids. But I just, if you want a possible connection um, to someone who literally might, you know, be interested in some sort of cataloging of stuff, I'd be happy to, you know, give her your email. She may be having Thanksgiving with our family. Uh -huh. I see her, you know, every week. Right. Uh, here's here's my email address. Uh, that I would really appreciate a lot, uh, um, David. Um, and thank you. I'm going to paste that immediately. Joy. Okay. Make sure I have that. There you go. My question is I got about it. yes, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I I like the. F I mean, it's obvious. You know, Nina said, for example, that uh, the activity, the the lessons didn't really fit her context. But as you pointed out, the videos do. Certainly, there's a lot of real language data there that people can use and adapt to their own purposes, which is one of the great strengths of your prolific work. Um, I wondered about your lessons, the ones you create, do you have feedback as to how they're used? Um, you know, the students like that kind of lesson, or they, do you know? Uh, how, how do you get feedback from your students? I'm sure you do have. Oh, um, yeah, I do. Um, I have a form um, that uh, students see when they finish a, a lesson, and they um, Add comments and sign up and, and add comments uh, if they if they feel like it. And um, I just changed my site just a couple of days ago, and I and I published on my main uh, on my home page um, the most. Um, um, how can I say? If you just go to the home page of Real English, you'll see about a fifty comments made by students and teachers about what they think of real English. 
Um, you know, I just I did this just uh, three or four days ago. Uh, you'll see uh, um, if you just go to uh, the home the home page. I'll I'll paste the home page URL here at the at the at the bottom of that rather long page. Um, you'll see uh, about 50 or so of the most complimentary uh, comments made by mostly students, but also teachers. Um, there's, there's another idea. Does that answer your? Yes. Yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, another idea is we, we, we just talked a couple of weeks ago with Kim Sabria, who is uh, one of the on the team that's developing Edpuzzle. Are you familiar with Edpuzzle? No, I'm not. It's a site that that's one. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say that's one disadvantage of of having a site to take care of all the time is that you don't discover as much as you should that it's out there. Yeah. Uh, please go on. Okay. Well, anyway, Edpuzzle takes videos from YouTube and um, lets English teachers make lessons from them. It's it's got really great reviews, and that's why I uh, asked uh, Kim to come and talk to us. So we've got the recording from a couple of weeks back, and you can hear more about it there. But um, since your videos are on YouTube, it's possible that people could take them and repurpose them in an Edpuzzle format. And of course, that has a link as well. So you were asking for feedback from teachers and to share lessons. Uh, but it might be interesting to encourage um, some feedback from people who might want to import your lessons to Edpuzzle and see what they're doing with them. Well, I'm going to check that out for sure. Yeah. Um, it might be a, a good outfit to make some sort of agreement with, perhaps. Well, yeah. I think uh, Kim himself is an English teacher, and he uh, he's from Barcelona. Uh, he was in San Francisco at the time, but uh, he he sort of designed a tool that he would want to use. He he might be one of the teachers who would take your video and use it himself, and he you tried to make a tool that would allow him and other teachers to do that and work with other people. And it's a free tool. And, but uh, it, it has lots of interesting advantages. And so we're, we're, we're using it a bit where I work, just to use videos in, our, in the way we want to use them. OK. Great. Yeah. Um, is that, uh, is the URL, uh, it's easy to find? Um, yeah, edpuzzle.com. Edpuzzle. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's Ed Puzzle, E B P U Z Z L E dot com. Great. Um, uh, there's one thing I want to do before I forget is to go to the last page of my. Uh, I want to give proper credit here uh, to two people who helped me um, with the site uh, recently. Um, in addition to the filming team, and the interviewees and the interviewers. Um, there's one Russian fellow, as you can see on the hit on the last page of uh, on the last page of the um, of the uh, presentation of the PPT. Uh, Slavic Ghost, my Russian friend, uh, has done a lot of work simply to uh, make the site uh, work better. Uh, work uh, faster, um, and at the same time, he's done some graphics for me. Graphics uh, better than the ones that I make myself, in many cases. And also to Glennis Hansen, who, like me, is retired, and who is an expert in uh, advanced exercise techniques. Um, in fact, this lesson 81. Um, she did herself the first 21 of the 100 exercises, and it was for me 
a technical learning experience, uh, and um, I want to be sure that Glennis gets her um, her credit because it was a pleasure to work with her. She's really smart, and she has her own site about um, uh, how she makes um, um, how she uses hot potatoes in the most advanced possible way. Um, I really love hot potatoes uh, only because it's uh, it's possible to customize it to the extreme uh, and make it do things it was never intended to do, uh, which is most evident in this new lesson 81. So hats off to uh, both Slavic and to Glennis. Here's, here's something else you uh, might be interested in. Um, Edpuzzle creates an embed of a video that has a very small footprint. And you can embed that into uh, into hot potatoes unless you take the you could I suppose embed the URL for the video as well. But you could play the video you could display the video in hot potatoes and you could play it. Or if that's a in our case it would be a problem because uh, many places block YouTube. Ours is one of them, but if we upload that to Edpuzzle, we can put the Edpuzzle embed there, and the embed is a very small footprint, so it plays pretty quickly. And then you can design a hot potatoes exercise around the, uh, uh, you know, with with the embed from you from uh, your site from any YouTube video, and that seems to work kind of interestingly. So there's another mm -hmm. suggestion that work for you. Okay, okay, I'm definitely going to check that out. Thanks. Rosemary had a question. She wanted to know if your slides would be available as SlideShare. And if they are, we could also link to them at, uh, at the archive that will go up at learningtogether.net. Sure. How do we do that? Uh, if you've got a SlideShare account, you just upload the slides and provide okay. us the link. Or you create a SlideShare account, upload the slides and provide the link. And we can then put the embed for your slides in the in the in the blog that we produce, slideshare.net. Okay. And uh, then I'll I'll uh, I'll send you the um, the link. Um, what's the best way to send the, to get the link out there to put it in the Yahoo groups? Uh? Oh, just send it to me, and I'll okay. I'll, it, I'll, I'll embed the slideshow. And then I wanted to let you know also that I put the let's see the the link to Kim Sabria. I put his I can't find where I put it now. It must be here. Here we go. Here's the link to Kim Sabria. Shall I just make a a um, I'll make a little web tour out of it. So here we go. This is the the one about Ed Puzzle where we talked with Kim a, a few weeks back. And there we go. I made the session moderator post that. Okay, this has been a really interesting session. Does anybody else have any last questions before we uh, thank Mike formally for his uh, his contribution to our field? Thank you to Ingrid, and bye bye, Ingrid. Yeah, In Ingrid mentioned that she uses uh, real. English quite a bit. Uh, her um, organization in Germany bought, I think it was 50 copies of my DVD, the DVD version of uh, of Real English, um, which was a big surprise. It was my biggest order ever. <laughs> That's cool. It's nice to see people who do what they want to do and help other people in the ways that you do succeed you know, and, and, and benefit from that. That's really nice. Yeah, really. That's true. Yeah. Well, we're talking here with Mike Marzio, uh, founder and chief bottle washer at realenglish.com. I hope that was the right URL. And uh, this is November 16th, 2014. 2014. <laughs>
And uh, it's always nice talking to Mike. We really appreciate it. We've talked to you several times in the past. You've participated in our webinars and action online convergences. And we've known you for ages. And it's, it's really great catching up on your work. OK. Well, that's, that's nice. Uh, nice of you to say. It's, uh, it's great to uh, participate uh, uh, with you guys, uh, too, for, for sure. I don't get out enough, so to speak, and uh, it's great. I love to do it when I can. Okay. Thanks, well, Mike. Thank you very much. And, uh, okay. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Robert said he, he's going to be making an Ed Puzzle uh, Real English video mashup soon. So we'll hear from Robert about how that comes out. Probably this yeah. week as part of the project. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Don't hesitate in uh, writing me uh, uh, about your your own uh, activities. Uh, for example, with uh, uh, Ed Puzzle, Puzzle Ed, Ed Puzzle, uh, etc. Okay. We'll I'll be I can even share the share puzzle with you. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll find out more about that uh, uh, in the very yeah. near future. Yeah. Okay. Nice to see Elizabeth again, as usual, and Robert, and Rosemary from Bolivia. Nice to meet with you. And we had a lot of other people that they happen to be here right now. But, uh, this is Matt Stevens and Al Ain, UAE, signing off on this session. So I'll leave the recording running momentarily. And if anybody pops in and says anything, we'll catch it. If not, uh, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks. Bye.